Greetings and welcome everyone to episode 29 of our playthrough of the Sevtech pack. So we had a couple mishaps here. The power went out and we lost a chunk, the chunk I was actually standing in. Luckily we only lost our kilns and our grills, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And I'm going to use this opportunity to reshape the house, I guess, since we had our little mishap. It actually cut up the area I was building upstairs for um, astral sorcery, so I'm going to have to fix that as well. And I actually ran out of marble and limestone to work on that, so <laughs> we're going to have to work on that in a separate uh, instance. But, as you can see, we have a little bit of a mishap. I even had to, re I even had to redo part of my... Um, part of my uh, advancements because I was missing a few when I went back from the old one and I couldn't for some reason recover this chunk. Every time I tried to recover this chunk it would revert me back to uh, the initial state of playing in the beginning. So I just ended up just leaving the chunk blank and it's water all up underneath here so I filled it all in for the most part and we're just gonna call it good. We're gonna build out from this and kinda a fresh start for age two and for continuing progress. So on today's episode, I want to work on a few things. I, I want to be able to get some um, statistical information to help me out a little bit better. So I was thinking about trying to make like, you know, the clock, the compass, stuff like that. I don't know if I can make the clock just yet, but I want to be able to make stuff that I can keep in my inventory that gives me statistical information and or that can help me out otherwise. So what I was thinking of doing is first thing, I'm thinking about making the sleep charm. So that I sleep much faster in beds. Because as you know, <laughs> when I sleep in the bed right now, it takes quite a few minutes or quite a few seconds for it to come through. I think it takes like 20 seconds. It's, it's not really that long, but the more time we can save, the more time we can do other things. And so with that, I'm going to take a short nap and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back from my nap. And so one of the first things we're going to do to help this out, we're going to go get some wool. And I've put some sheep aside over here that we can use to gather wool or fleece I should say to use to make wool because that's what we're gonna need here we're gonna need this fleece here to make some wool so let me uh let me shear these sheep real quick it took me a minute to grab them I was only able to get three or four before this whole thing kicked off and now they're gonna start uh, regaining their coats pretty quickly but 21 should be enough to be able to do what we need to do we just need to make a bed real quick and go from... Oh, I see you there, buddy. You're trying to get me. Okay, so there we go. We got 28 now. That's plenty. I heard it all, but I'm not listening. Okay, so we got 28 this time. And the basic process for making wool, and I've already had to make it once because um, I partially recorded this episode when I lost power. So a few things have already been done, but I just want to show you guys how I did them and how I accomplished them. Hopefully piranhas don't attack me this time like last time. That was kind of sucky. But if they do, oh well, we'll survive somehow. We always do. So let's head back. And we're going to put this stuff together here. The basic idea is you take the sugar cane and you put it like that and you're going to get your wickers. We need a few more wickers here to be able to make this thing from scratch here. Let's see. We have a little bit more. There we go. We can use up our sugar cane for this project. Oh yeah, there's plenty there. And then we take our wickers and we put them into fours and we'll get the blocks of wick. And then it's just as simply as taking these blocks of wicker and putting our fleece on the sides here. And we only need three pieces, but we're gonna take all four here. And I do have a few of these others already made and ready to go, but I wanted to show you guys how I did it. So, there you go. Now you know. Now the next thing we need to do is we actually need to make a bed. And beds are pretty easy now that we have the blocks of wool. And that's that's pretty much it right there. And then we're going to need some leather and some sticks. Which we can easily get both of those real quick. So we'll go one, two, three, four. And then we'll go over here and go one, two, three, four. So basically, I just make the charm. And what bam it's that easy. Stick it on me person. And now when I sleep, it's almost instantaneous. Now what other cool things could we do that's similar to that? So one of the things that I was thinking is the fast eating charm. We're almost out of food anyway. So let's go 
get... Oh, I'm already slow. Okay, we'll only eat a little bit because we want to show demonstrate how this one works. We're gonna need some... We're gonna need some wheat here. In fact, I think we need three pieces of wheat for this. And we'll throw out those seeds. So we got our wheat here. And then we're gonna need to pound out some apples. Oh, by the way, he luckily survived. He was on the very edge of the chunk. I got so lucky with him. So now we're gonna need to take some gold here. And we're going to hammer this gold out here. Like, oh, where's our hammer at? Oh, our hammer must have broke. Well, let me make a new hammer real quick. Let's see, grab a piece of stone and a stick. Pretty easy recipe. That is no problem for us. There we go. Oh, there we go, because we're going to hammer this out. Well, not this one per se, but other ones. Okay, so for the glutton charm, we have a few choices. So let's look them up. And the first choice we have is the different types of apple we can use. Because there's this easy apple, which is the one we're going to make. And then there's... The hard apple, which is the one we're not going to make. Because <laughs> that's a bit too hard. So what I'm going to do is grab an apple. We're going to make this thing real quick. So let's go. We'll surround the apple like so. And so now we have a golden apple. And we could put up those reeds here real quick. And we're going to grab a piece of string while we're at it. Like so. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to make our gluttony charm just like so. Now it's a babel also, but I think it fits the same slot as that one. But what I've noticed, it really only needs to be in your inventory. So I just set it off to the side there like so. And I eat like a champ. I'm a good eater now. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so the gluttony charm is done. What else can we do? Let's look up the compass. I think that would be another good one to have because that'll give us coordinates, right? And that would be nice to have. It'd be really nice to have a compass. I guess there's several types of compasses here. Oh, I don't want that one. That one's got a whole bunch of extra stuff on it. Whoops. What do we got here? We have a zombie guy here. There we go. Got rid of him. Man, sometimes they do come through that portal. It is kind of odd. But it has happened two or three times. Let's put our regular boots back on here. Our helmet broke, but that's fine. We can make another one at some point here. So we're going to need four pieces of iron here. We got three right here. And we'll just hammer out one more of these. And we'll be good to go. And then we'll hammer out four plates. I think, uh, I think that's what it takes. Yeah, four plates. Be pretty easy. We'll, we'll do the four plates here. Oh, if I actually made them it would be pretty easy so let's see one two three we just hammer these out real quick and we'll have it in no time oh the anvil broke now that's probably not good let's look up that real quick i need to replace that oh it's four stones and three slabs that's not too difficult that's the second one i've gone through man and then we need four of these so let's just go like so Grab this, like so. Easy peasy, quick fix. And there we go, we got our numbers now. So let's go back and look up our compass. And there we go. So let's see here, we're gonna need to make an iron arrowhead. An iron arrowhead to go with these. So let's do that real quick. Now, I did previously make the cast, but casts are pretty easy to make, and I don't really feel like making another one at this point. And then we're just going to pour in some liquid hot iron. There we go. Throw up two more to replace the ones we took from it. And there we go. So now we'll put back our cast, and we have our arrowhead, we have our iron plates, so we technically have a compass, like so. See? Now, you see the coordinates? Oh, nice. You see the coordinates? If you hold it in your hand, you get the altitude 
Everything about it's pretty nice. So it puts the X and Z up in the corner. It gives you the chunk number, which is pretty awesome. Or numbers within the chunk, I think. Interesting. Yep, yep. So I mostly just wanted that to have off to the side so I can keep my numbers up at the top to help me out. Okay, so gluttony or the compass is done as well. So I think one of the last ones I would like to look into is the calendar. I'm not quite sure what it does, but I want to try it out. Because why not, right? What else are we going to do? So we got the calendar right here. And let's look up the recipe. It's just paper surrounded by the gold-plated clock. So we need to get some gold, which we already have, thankfully. And what we're going to do here is we're going to hammer out this gold. Should be pretty easy. Make our gold plates here. So there we go. We got our gold plates. Let's put up our hammer. That should be good for now. Helping us out on everything. We need to grab some lapis. We need five of that. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now we'll go in here and we will make this part of it like so. So it gives us our day and night cycle here, but it doesn't show it on screen. So let's see what happens when we get some paper. Where did I put that paper at? So we need four pieces of paper and we should be able to make this compass or this calendar. Ah, it tells me it's January 3rd of the first year. Hmm. Not really sure how that pans out, but I'll pretty much accept it and we'll go from there. Let's put up our iron, I guess. That's a good thing we should do. Now we have quite a few of the things we need. It's almost nighttime. We're going to sleep here real quick and be able to get it done from there. So it's not that big of a deal. What I'm going to do is I think that we need to automate this hopper over here, or automate this. Uh, melter over here which I think is exactly what we're gonna do so I'm gonna check in on something and then I'll be right back so I'm back and we need to get started on this hopper here well before that let's take a short nap and I'll show you how quick it is so there you go that's as easy as it is you literally just lay down on the bed get right back up there's no waiting there's no delay there's no nothing so we need to make this hopper here so let's look it up here real quick and then we're going to be able to find it here we are so it requires some glass and a regular hopper we haven't quite made a regular hopper yet but it's just going to be five pieces of iron hammered out a bronze gear and a chest so let's start we can easily make that chest right off the bat just like so and then what we want to do is we're going to take one of our handy dandy gears here and we're going to combine it with some stone Let's see here, just like so. And then we're gonna need some bronze to put around that. And I think both of them, the iron that we're gonna need, the five pieces of iron and the four pieces of bronze, both need to be hammered flat. So let's double check that. Yep, sure does. Let's grab our hammer and we'll get those two done real quick. Get all these plate plated up. Whoops, wrong button. There we go. Now I'll just move that to make this a little bit easier. There we go. Now we have all those ingredients to be able to make and successfully use this hopper here. So let's see here. What are we gonna do with this? Let's see. We have our bronze plates, so let's go into our crafting on a stick and let's finish up our plate here. Or I mean our gear, there we go. And we also need to grab five pieces of glass, just like so, which is pretty easy. Let's see. Hmm. 
We should have all the components now needed for this. Let's make a real hopper. And there we go. There's also a upper, which works like a hopper, but does just the opposite. It pulls it up instead of pushing it down. It's pretty awesome. You may get into one of those one of these days. Definitely looks like an early way to do some sort of inventory management or item movement. So now we have the liquid hopper. So let's see. The liquid hopper is a hopper which you can use to transfer liquids. Like the omnidirectional hopper, it's omnidirectional. Apart from transferring liquids from one tank to another, the liquid hopper will try to empty any liquid container, like a bucket, lying at the input side. Likewise, it will try to fill any liquid container at the output side. So this is pretty awesome. For more information, you can check out the in-game wiki mod, but we don't have that installed as far as I know. But this is from Pneumonicraft Repressurized, and I think this is a pretty doggone good block to have. And so we're going to take this nice hopper here, and we're going to try to put it in place here and see what it does. So I already took off the, um, the faucet, and I think due to lack of wrenches, I really got to be careful on how I place this. So as you notice, it's already starting to fill it up, and if we go into the inventory here itself, you notice there's several tabs here. This one goes over exactly what we, what I read earlier. But then you have redstone control behavior, and you have any signal, high signal, and low signal, which basically means that any signal, it will just work, regardless of the redstone signal around it. At high signal, it will only work when you give it a redstone signal. And at low, it will only stop when you give it a redstone signal. But we're gonna keep it on any right now because we don't really need it for anything else. And I guess there are upgrades for this. I was unaware of this, but it's pretty neat to have upgrades for it. Um, I don't really see the speed as a problem, but there are other advantages to it, you know, because it can suck li liquids up and it can be used as like a makeshift pump in a lot of ways. And I think that's pretty unique and pretty neat. And so, of course, there's no problems with how it's operating when it's uh, um, green like this. When it's red, that means there's some sort of problem, maybe missing redstone signal or something along those lines. And this will give you the hopper status, how fast it transfers. And then this one also will give you the mode, whether it's emptying out of a tank or leaving a, a smidge in there in, in from the as though it's a filter, which is pretty nice. And so now you look in here and you got your iron melting up and it's casting it automatically and it's turning it into blocks for you. Very, very nice. Very, very convenient. I really like the liquid hopper from Pneumatocraft and it, it even has a good um, uh, window from the... Um, that's not Willie. I think that's one probe up there giving us the basic overview information as we look over it. And I think that's I think that's uh, some of the things we really wanted to cover today. And so let's see what else we can get into with our um, crafting and whatnot. Since we've already, you know, charmed ourselves up and given ourselves um, some new things to look at and to use as a part of our activities here. So let's see. Let's see what we can do here with our advancements. Now, there is the watering can. I think that might be something we could look into doing that would be quite fun. So let's see, we got the watering can here. So if you're tired of waiting for crops to grow, craft the watering can. So let's look that up real quick. That looks like something fun that we could make. And I've done a smidge of preparation for it already. So we're basically gonna need some more iron plates. We're gonna need four more iron plates. So let's go plate up some iron here and again we're gonna need to smash a um, block that's just fine we can easily do that so we'll go over here whoops I should put it on there before I smack it there we go and we'll pick those up and they went and stacked with those ones so we'll put them down there and we need four of them should be fairly easy And there we go. Pretty easy. So now let's see. The, f the only hard thing we have to acquire here, if we look at this recipe, is the fertilizer. Because we have everything else already. It's the fertilizer that we have to look forward to making here. And so it requires biomass. And biomass is pretty much any foodstuffs put in a 2x2. A two two. And then once you have that, you can just use it inside of a compost for 150 seconds to make a piece of fertilizer. So what I did here is I already set it up 
And now we already have 64 bags of fertilizer. And I think it acts like bone meal. I'm assuming. Yep. So that makes it pretty easy and pretty convenient. So let's build this real quick and then we're going to test it out. Might as well have some fun with it, right? So let's see. Fast farm. There we go. We got that advancement taken care of. And so we finished out that little uh, branch. And it's kind of nice. We're working our way through H2. Not necessarily trying so, I'm so hard with that. I think a lot of uh, H2 will be spent on astral sorcery. And then again, uh, a huge chunk will be in the between lands. Which I'm really looking forward to. I'm going to build a base over there. And we're going to have some fun with that. I think it'll really be worth it. So let's go over here to where we have our crops that are only partially grown. Which would pretty much be the wheat. And I think we have to fill up the watering can. I think it's full, I'm not sure. Oh, it says filled, okay. So that means it's full. And then it just acts similarly to the other types of cans we've used in the past. I mean, Extra Utilities has its can. I think now even, um, whatchamacallit has a can. Thermal uh, Expansion. And that's pretty nice. I think it's called Thermal Cultivation. But if you look, it just slowly causes them to grow. It actually just probably increases the tick rate chance for it to change to the next stage which I mean it's good it works it works so there we go tested that out it works now we have a watering can to use whenever we want it's pretty nice I know I'm happy to have a watering can man this looks so empty without my house here uh, I tried for like two hours to get that to be fixed and it just it would not fix in fact after about the two hour mark it started to revert back um, every time I would change the the region file and so I just uh, I ended up giving up and then I had to work on getting my advancements back but we are better than we were before and that's what's important so let's drop this in here let's check on this how are we doing okay so it's still got 18 left and it's cooking them up which is good after that we'll drop in some probably drop in some gold to get it cooked up a little bit here so let's see here. We'll grab these two and we'll call that good. There we go. So now we have some level of automation for that. And we can see that it is putting more and more blocks of iron in there. And the next step for us, let's see. Oh man, I eat so fast now. The next step for us is to figure out how we're going to make this resonating wand. And so that can be done today. I think we can work on that right now, in fact. So let's... Let's go here and look up our resonating wand. Like so. Now let's see, which one is the actual res- there it is. It's the first one on the list. Ah, uh, all the other ones have um, specific constellations tied to them. Okay, no worries. Well, I guess there's two versions of the resonating wand here. But they're, they're similar enough. One of the first things we're going to need to do is stop the iron, I guess. I should have looked ahead a little bit further. We're going to stop the iron and stop the gold here. We're going to let this plate up. So we got one in there now. Two, three. Yeah, we'll let that finish here in a bit. What we need now is to put these in here for the moment. Yep. Oh, wait. The gold didn't. There it is. Okay. So I made a cast already. No, I didn't. I didn't actually make a cast yet. Okay, so let's make the cast. Which is the pan? Oh, I already had it here, but I haven't made it as a part to take away. So we'll grab this here like so, and we got. We'll actually cast this one out. And so to do that, we're going to drop this in here. And we have to go over here. And we have to turn the signal to high. Otherwise, I have to take it down and put it back. And better just to do it this way, make it a little bit easier on ourselves. There we go. And so these will melt out, and then we'll pour them in here to fill this out. To make the pan and then we'll grab that resonating that resin or the ender dust to make our pearl this will be our first pearl this is gonna be pretty cool so let's go over here and let's see okay so it's ready to go those ingots cook up real quick let's drop this dust in there and watch it melt okay so it's melting pretty quick which is good and we'll just transfer it into there and we'll have our first pearl. Now the next step, I don't know if it's cheating or not. Um, 
But I, what I am going to do is I'm going to take two pieces of marble and I'm going to reshape it to the parts we need for this. I think it can be any stone marble. Okay, so I don't really need to reshape it. So any stone marble will work. And then we're going to need two aquamarines. And I think we're good to go. So let's see here. Is it melted? It is molten ender pearl. So let's make our pearl real quick. There we go. So we made our pearl real quick. And now we're going to try to make our wand here. We now have the resonating wand. We just finished the advancement resonation. There we go. So let's look down there and see what more we can do. It looks like this is going to be the end of this particular branch here. So what we're going to do here is you'll need a resonating wand from Astral Sorcery to continue your journey. And we got it. So we're going to use this with our table, which we lost in the initial, but I made another one, um, to advance in Astral Sorcery up there in our next spot. And I think for today, that's pretty much where we're going to call it. We made our wand here, which I thought would be pretty awesome, and it is. We got... Um, all of our little charms made, our calendar, our gluttony charm, our sleep charm and whatnot, and I got a compass made, and we even worked on putting in place some, some level of automation for our liquid hopper. I think that's a good stopping point for today, and I really appreciate you guys watching, so don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.